Hey guys, um, this is my first video back from the holidays. I hope everybody had a great Christmas, great New Year's, and I hope 2015 is turning out to be a great travel year for you guys. Uh, I'm currently at the Prama Sanur Hotel and on Sanur Beach in Bali, uh, enjoying the humidity and uh, the rainstorms every night. It's rainy season here. So I wanted to do this first video because there's, it's, a, it's a special week. Uh, tomorrow is the 70th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz uh, concentra concentration camp in uh, Poland. And uh, if you guys have looked at my blog, you notice I haven't written anything about my uh, trip uh, about a year and a half ago to Auschwitz Birkenau. Um, it's because it had a special impact on me. Uh, unlike any other destination in the world, uh, unlike any other uh, tourist attraction, uh, Auschwitz and Birkenau had the largest personal impact on me. Uh, I'm not Jewish, and uh, clearly, but I am a racial minority, and I understand the idea of systemic marginalization uh, of an entire community. Now, um, being an African American, that goes hand in hand with the conversation about slavery. But I want to stick to the conversation about uh, the morality of dark tourism. Uh, meaning uh, these places that we go, um, the killing fields in Cambodia, Pearl Harbor, uh, the 9-11 site, uh, and of course Auschwitz and Birkenau in Poland. Um, I'm going to cover this in, in my blog post, but I'll briefly touch on it here. Um, I find that a lot of these locations uh, shouldn't still be open. Um, some people say that they're to memorialize the victims and so we won't forget what happened. That's not the feeling I received when I was at uh, Auschwitz and Birkenau. Um, the, the feeling that I had going through Auschwitz was just, just, just pain, you know, um, just, I, I have no personal connection to that atrocity, but I, I felt like I was there, if that makes any sense to you guys. Um, at one point, I was walking through one of the small tunnels leading to a chamber uh, where they would make people stand for days. Um, it, it, a tiny little hole. Uh, the hall was full of tourists. It was muggy. It, it was freezing cold. And I literally scra was scraping against the walls. It was so narrow. And I started to feel guilty because I had the option to turn around and walk out. But millions of people who had gone through that tunnel didn't have that option. They... They were they were stuck in a situation where they were going to die, and 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 eventually uh, many of them realized that. And, and I started to imagine what what would I do if I knew that I was just waiting for my turn to die in a chamber or by firing squad. I don't know, you know. Um, what would I do if my family? was sleeping in the bed next to me and, and pulled out in the middle of the night to be raped and beaten and killed. I, I, I'd like to, I, I would like to say the machismo thing here and say, oh, I'd fucking kill those Nazis or it would never happen to me, but nah. You know, you, you, it, it's just, it's foolish to believe that the Jewish community or even the African American community during slavery had that systemic that that power that that position to to defend themselves in, in a meaningful way without losing their lives and poland really my, my trip to auschwitz in poland really made me reflect upon who i am as a person um and at at one point i felt ashamed because i started to admire what the nazis had done not in Oh, I'm happy that they had a concentration camps. It was fucking impressive how they how they created such a system of terror and torture and hid it from the world for so long. It it it, it boggles the mind how they can think of up something so evil and diabolical it's fucking evil genius and you hear about it in movies and on tvs and being yeah i'm 31 now i've never in my lifetime there's never been anything like that you know in, in most people's lifetimes there there hasn't been anything like what the nazis did so 
it to go to Auschwitz and to go to Birkenau and actually see it still, it really you can't come out of that place the same person. Uh, either you're going to be a bigger asshole than you are, or you're really going to start to question humanity and what men can do. Um, as a soldier, uh, I was a soldier for over ten years. If I was ordered to to guard a place like Auschwitz five years ago while I was still in the military, what would I do? I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know because I was asked to guard innocent civilians at gunpoint. You know, I mean, uh, I was asked to do a lot of things while I was in the service that I wasn't you know, in hindsight, I'm not too proud of. So, you know, I'll switch and Burke and I really had a, a impact on me uh, as a person. Um, do I believe people should still go as a tourist destination? Uh, honestly, I don't, uh, I don't really see the good in it. Per, like, I, I, I think a lot of people feel that it's... Uh, it's a memorial, but I, I, I just see it as a fucking concentration camp. I see it as, as death. I see it as a gas chamber where millions upon p millions of people died. I see uh, the canisters that killed millions of people being sold on postcards at the gift shop there. Like, who the fuck buys a postcard with gas canisters on it? Like, I, I see people taking selfies with in inside the fucking inside the gas chamber. People like. Taking selfies, like I, I don't know. I, I just uh, and I, and I fully understand um, its operation as an educational tool, especially for young kids, 13, 14 year old kids. Um, I, I definitely see that, but in my opinion, I don't think the benefit outweighs the the cost to me. And I, and I believe that a lot of the actions of some of the visitors are very disrespectful. Um, I saw people's names carved in the wall, like Manny 2011. You know, I, I just, uh, clearly some people don't have the reverence for human life that I do. Uh, but that goes what I was saying. So, um, yeah, uh, so this week on my blog, I'm dedicating um, uh, pretty much every post uh, to my experience at Auschwitz and Birkenau, as well as my visit to Schindler's Museum. Um, and on social media, I'll be posting uh, articles and uh, re recounts and retellings of uh, some of the survivors. Um, I actually had the, the pleasure of meeting one survivor there. It was a total fluke accident. Um, it was his first time back uh, to Auschwitz. And um, yeah, he, he took about five minutes to speak with us. And it, it, was, it was actually really amazing to actually meet him. So, um, and, and I'll post up that photo um, on um, a photo journal um yeah whew, sorry guys i'm, I'm kind of rambling because even now my my emotions about auschwitz and birkenau are just kind of all over the place because i really it's really making me question um what i believe as a person and um what we should be doing um globally as a country uh, or i mean to hell what as a country as a species to to prevent things like auschwitz from happening um there's genocide going on right now today in in Africa, but apparently you know black lives don't matter, you know, African lives don't matter to some. So what can you do? Uh, but but speak up and stand up and try to make a difference uh, one person at a time. Um, so again, uh, tune back in. I, I hope you guys uh, come back to my blog uh, and uh, see what I post up um, here in the next week. And uh, expect a lot more content coming later. So thank you so much uh, for looking at my video. And I'll see you guys next time. Later.